Hey, we're back after a long hiatus. And our guest this week on VoiceOver Body Shop is Thompson Howell. Don't look too excited. So no. important he needs two microphones. <laughs> exactly. Why are there two? I don't get it. just <laughs> want to make sure it works right. There you go. Redundancy. Yeah. <laughs> and we'd love your questions for Thompson. Uh, so stay tuned here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Lots of fun stuff to talk about. We'll be right there. Two men. Twin sons from different mothers with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together, in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no-holds-barred, myth-busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products. Source Elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Hi there, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or VO. B.S. All righty. Well, boy, that was a long break. It was. But we're back now. Well-deserved break, I hope. Oh, it was, and a fantastic well -appreciated cruise break. Yeah. to Alaska. Yeah. If you get the chance to go to Alaska, do it. You may not want to live there in January, February, March, April, maybe May. They spend two, they, they have three seasons there. They have, I guess, June is summer and, yeah. and, and July. And then August is fall and the rest is winter. <laughs> <laughs> and which which cruise line were you on? We were on Princess. Is that the one? Or is it? Well, several? they've been there the longest. Yeah, yeah. And okay. they own everything. Now. Okay. Yeah. You, know, they, you know, they own all the lodges and yeah. stuff. You know, it was interesting. But, yeah. you know, there's there's too much to tell in this show because we have other things to tell. As you about. can probably tell, the backdrop is probably this, related the, to your trip. This maybe? is Hurricane Gulch. It's a, This is a 300-foot oh. trestle bridge on the Alaska Railway. And I, they're like, get your cameras out, you know, as we're going by there on the way up to Denali. And, and that's why. It's that's, and that's why. It's a, cool. great, it's a great picture. And you can see the mountains in the background. Yeah. Alaska is mountains. Yeah. I mean, it's mountains from Vancouver all the way to everywhere else. And they get bigger and bigger as you go, right? They go bigger and bigger, yeah. and there's more and more glaciers, and it was amazing. Sounds cool. Yes. Well, and you're I'm probably... 50. I'm going there for my 50th birthday. You're here. Yes. Heard of your first. All right. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you where to go. And you're probably wondering about this thing. I know it's a fez. It is a fez. Well, my, my sister-in-law, who was also with us in Alaska, and we yeah. were giving each other all sorts of stuff. She was just in Morocco as well. She gets around. Mm -hmm. And she says, well, what would you like from Morocco since I'm going to Morocco? I said, are you going to be in fez? She goes, yes. I said, I would love to get a fez from fez. It's naturally. I now have a fez. I'm just noticing how thick the felt is. Yes. It's quite thick. It is. Very impressive yes. felt. So anyway, but we don't need to be dealing with this the whole time. <laughs> anyway. But I had to show it off. Yes, of course. Anyhow, we have a great guest tonight, and we'd love for you to ask, ask him questions, because we're going to mm -hmm. ask him questions as well. Yep. But let me introduce him. Let's see what Let's kind of stuff this. he does. Uh, Thompson Howell has a cool, wry with, way with words with its spotlight stories, with a focused identity and a distinct point of view, whether in commercials, promo, trailer, or narration. You've heard him on promos for many major broadcast networks and cable channels and countless radio and TV commercials for some of America's and the world's best brands. Let's take a look at some of his stuff. 
Here we are. Home sweet home. Have a look around. You're perfectly safe. That's safe? As long as it's fed. Welcome to a house. Things are quite different here. With magic. Let me show you what a little weird can do. <laughs> Monsters. So creepy. And a mind of its own. Shall we? Seriously? God, I hate pumpkins. The house with a clock in its walls. Bad kitty! Use the litter box! Rated PG. The world's greatest illusionist. That's Cameron Black. Is now working for the FBI. I couldn't have done without my beautiful assistant. Don't ever say that again. Deception. Coming to ABC. You know I can be the devil. Acrimony. Rated R. In theaters March 30th. I want to know your secret. Tell me. A Simple Favor. Rated R. September 14th. Documentary Now presents The Bunker. Thank you. The election that defined a generation and the political masterminds behind it. We're going to win. We're young. We're cute. woo From Fred Armisen. You think I'm a cute hunk? I feel like I'm shy. Bill Hader. We change the way that election narratives are hijacked. And executive producer Seth Meyers. Put the taffy down, Tubby Tammy. Documentary Now, a new story each week. Wednesdays at 10, starts September 14th on IFC. <laughs> All right, he can't wait to answer your questions. Here is Thompson Howell, hey. ladies and gentlemen. You can applaud for yourself. Oh, you guys. There you go. Thank you, thank you. I'm here. Good to be here. Thanks so much for having me. This oh, is wonderful. Pleasure having you here. Frank, nice to meet I'll, you. I want to hear online. more about your trip to Alaska. That's way more interesting than Oh, Alaska it's today. it's it's a it's a it's a quite the travel log. Follow him on face, Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't post much on Facebook. But I anyway, have, I have time. You're you're originally from Boston. <laughs> I am. Like our technical director, Sue. Sue so are you? Boston. <laughs> Looking good. Go socks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Salzy. Uh but uh, were you interested in voiceover and acting in Boston and then went to Northwestern for for, for that? So, or? yeah, here's my, my story in a okay. nutshell. I studied music when I was very young, piano and pipe organ. I'm actually Ooh. an organist. Oh, cool. Uh, and I play around some churches here in L.A. It's a really weird story. Um, and by halfway through high school, I got the acting bug. Yeah. That led me to be in the drama club and all sorts of stuff like that. That led me to a college at Northwestern where I got my acting degree. And, um, and then after, after that, I, uh, took my very first voiceover class because I'd heard, worked at the campus radio station and heard about this freelancing voiceover. You make some extra money sometimes. Um, and that led me to, um, uh, radio working as a disc jockey in Chicago, ah. which I kept up with off and on for 20 years. Simultaneously with that, I began my voiceover career, which really started in earnest in the early nineties, probably 1991 when I got my first exclusive agent in chicago and and i they sort of grew together but eventually what happened is the radio was this and they kind of switched places i decided i kind of liked the freelance lifestyle and was making more money at it than i was working for a radio, radio station, station in my two well, weeks vacation and whatever else yeah. was you get married you have a family it's like you know i really need to make a living Why right 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 radio? exactly exactly <laughs> um and then uh yeah and I, I quit radio in uh october 1st 2006 my last day on the air and a couple days later, I moved out here to L.A. So here I am. Wow. Just get in the car and go. Took a little more planning. Okay. That, oh, okay. Well, that's good. Like a trip to Alaska. Yeah. Like, now, like many successful people in acting and voice acting, the top people went to the top schools. I hear this many times. You know, people went to Harvard, Dartmouth. Northwestern is one of those schools that gets mentioned a lot. And right. I, and I know a bunch of Northwestern grads who are in voiceover yeah. and in acting. What... What was it about Northwestern that, that uh, is really good for, for drama and, and getting you prepared for this sort of thing? Well, from the acting standpoint, it has a, a great, I mean, it's so different now. This is, right. you know, I graduated 30 something mm -hmm. years ago, um, but it was uh, an outstanding acting program within a university setting. Um, and it, that still exists, though it has changed and evolved and grown. Um, but it's funny, there was no, some of us, uh, like our friend Tish Hicks and some mm -hmm. other people, we talk about, you know, there was no on-camera acting classes at Northwestern at the time. There was nothing about voiceover. We didn't really find out about it much until we got out uh, and started, uh, you know, doing theater work or, or radio work in my case. Um, so it became something I became aware of that way. But the acting training you get at, at, at a high quality, and it doesn't have to be Northwestern. It could be in any number of great schools or, um, you know, local classes here in L.A. Um, the acting background has such a huge amount to play in being a great voice actor because it's still acting even though you're just using your voice 
Right, right. So now you, you, your real specialty is promo, as we were seeing from that, you know, that, that clip of your, your promo stuff. I mean, clearly you, you do commercial work and things like that. Right. How does one make that transition from, you know, just doing the voiceover and being on the radio to doing the promo and trailer work that uh, not easy work to get? In 30 right. minutes or less. It, it, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'll sum it up in five it's seconds for you. Stuff it in the Walmart. You practice. <laughs> Relation? No, it's yeah. it, it is. I mean, you have to know you want to do it first of all. There are certain right. skill sets. If you if you look at commercial as being a sort of a uh, foundational thing in voiceover, right? And you want to venture off into it in another area, you've got to uh, find out how to do that. And there's certain skill sets involved in promo work uh, that you need to learn about. You can take classes, workshops, whatever. Um, and then once you've got the skills and you've you've got the chops, you put together a, a good demo. You're going to need an agent, um, uh, primarily L.A., New York, for the majority of promo work, because that's where the uh, entertainment industry tends to be based, and, and the news and broadcast industry tends to be based more in New York. Um, so it's good to have agents in both of those cities, although you can be elsewhere. You don't have to live in each of those cities necessarily, but you, you really ought to be represented by agents in those two cities. Yeah. Now, a lot, a lot of people ask, you know, because we talk with a lot of people who are really trying to break into the business, and they're like, i got to get an agent. Right. Like, getting an agent, not the easiest thing in the no. world. No, that all? You just need an agent. Yeah, of course. And that's going to change your entire career. Right. How did you go about getting an agent? It didn't happen overnight. I'm sure you were probably doing fairly well. And one said, "Hey, you know, it's they don't say, you know, I think you got talent, kid." Right. You know, it's it's a little different than that. Explain to how, how it worked for you. Um, I started out, like I said, I took my first voiceover class and produced my very first voiceover demo at the end of that class, mm -hmm. um, and I still have it. it. Was on a five inch reel. Mm -hmm. You know, this is like you know, old woolen sack tape yeah. machines and all <laughs> stuff like right. that, and. Um, I had taken that class and I submitted to several agents in Chicago because you could be multi-listed. You could have several agents and was that way for a while. And then one day I took a, a workshop um, with my friend Maurice, Tobias, who we mm -hmm. all know, um, who was coming through Chicago for the very first time. Uh, I think it was one of her first times, 1991, I believe. And I took this workshop uh, that was recommended to me and uh, my then future exclusive agent happened to be sitting in had heard about her and uh, was sitting in there and heard me work, went back to her. She said she went back to her office the next day, went to the top shelf, whew, blew off the cassette, <laughs> blew off the dust off the cassette uh, demo I had sent her, you know, last year, the year before, something like that. Said, oh, that guy. And put two and two together and she signed me. So that's how I got my very first, you, you know, real uh, agent. Yeah. Hmm. And, and. They're, and they're but negotiating for you and they're, well, go ahead. Yeah, well, having, you know, having the, the chops and putting a good demo together, because that's, you know, these days I find that's the primary purpose of a good demo is to get good representation. Um, Your demo, is it comprised of entirely custom written scripts or is it a lot of real material that it, you've lifted from it, your... It can work? be a little bit of both, you know. Um, to me, the, the thing about a good demo, no matter what genre you're talking about, um, is and, and it talks. It's a bigger picture about marketing and voiceover. Mm -hmm. What's your brand? What are you? What's your, what's your? What are things are really in your wheelhouse? You you want to be able to show. You want to be known for something. You want to be remembered for something. And you can show a little versatility over here and a little versatility over here. But for the purposes of a demo, which you know, sixty seconds tops these days, um, you want to have your your best material. This is me putting my best stuff forward. Um, so it could be some stuff you've done. Uh, but a lot of times you're going to write stuff or have stuff written for you with, with a pretty, whatever producer you choose, who's going to be able to uh, fine tune that demo. So you're highlighting what you can do, not necessarily what you've done, because it's not just a resume of what you've done. A good demo should be about what you can do. And, you know, if you throw a little surprise in there somewhere, say, oh, Thompson, I didn't know you could do that. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, you want to show your range. Exactly. You want to show a little yeah. bit of range, but still keep that, that specificity of, uh, mm. um, you know, being known for something. Yeah, that's important. If you're just joining us, our guest is Thompson Howell, who's, you know, you may not know his name, but clearly you've heard his voice probably three or four times a day. Uh, if you've got a question for him, throw it in our chat room. And I know Mike Merlino is uh, 
hiding back there somewhere. Me too. Hopefully. I'm also and George I'm is also monitoring for him for okay, a while. in case he's doing something else. Yeah. Uh, if you've got a question for Thompson, throw it in there right now. We'll get to it in our next segment. And I'm sure this kind of stuff, you probably have lots of questions because everybody you know, looks at voiceover and they think, well, I could be doing that trailer stuff. Right? Everybody thinks they could do this. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's not. It's not a large roster of people doing this stuff. Uh, it's highly specialized, skilled work, I would say. So how does one prepare themselves to do this kind of thing, and should they try? Or... Well, I'm not going to discourage anybody <laughs> okay, from you know, good. You know, pushing people's dreams away. But I, you know, as the, when I started in the business way back then, you know, 30 years ago, it was much sm- I'm not talking the entire industry. It was so much smaller. Pre-internet. No P2P sites, right. no internet, no MP3, no ISDN, none of that, uh, and none of the more modern uh, connectivity technologies. As the technology came along, the whole industry has grown. So this, this, there's a lot more competition. It's a glo- kind of a global thing, and more people can more easily get into the industry with, with, the, with comparatively simple technologies. Um, so you need to stand out. And... Um, Making sure your demo stands out and having it, it's a people business too. The whole industry is a you know, the technology is great. We can all sit in our little holes and, and, and do our work on a daily basis, auditions, work, whatever. But the um, it's really a people business and having good representatives. Um, uh, in my case, anyway, I came up the old school way the, through the talent agency route, and I still do it that way. Having great representatives who have uh, great relationships in the industry with the buyers you're trying to reach out to is 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 really key. Right. Um, yeah. Are do you see a lot of new faces in there though? I mean, I, I watch sure. a fair amount of TV because my life's not very exciting, uh, and uh, you know I hear the TV promo voices and I see the movie trailers. It's a lot of the same people. Rarely do I hear. A new voice, a few more female voices that yep. we haven't heard. So you're before. hearing that more now, yeah. Uh, but not a huge variety. I mean, each network has their people, although there are lots of people that cross over between networks and stuff. Right. Uh, what does it really take? What is the technique that's going to push someone there? Is it an inherent talent? Is it acting? Is there a specific technique? that they're looking for. I, I think, you know, the, the gone, way gone are the days when you had the voice of a network, you know, right. Ernie Anderson on ABC, Chuck Riley on the CBS, love, uh, my friend Andy Geller on, on ABC. Those days are gone. And, and you've heard somewhat, somewhat consistent voices on NBC up until very recently um, with Reno uh, Romano and uh, Dorian Harewood. But that's all changing. The networks, they're always looking for new voices. It's not just about the voice of the network now is the voice of this show right, or shows right, right, right. so there is more opportunity for for people to to get in there and 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 cable let's not let's not forget about the whole cable universe right and the netflix universe and what and the apple tv or whatever they're calling it uh which is going to their streaming services which are going to start in the fall and um and, and everything else there's, there's all these opportunities to promote product and they need people to do that and you know the same five people can't do that this is too much right so that's that's a way in all right once again we're talking with thompson howell got a question mm-hmm. throw it in the chat room so what's your your day usually like i mean how much do you do in a particular day it depends on the day i'm sure i'll be honest yeah. it can vary some yeah. days are very busy with auditions or sessions or whatnot and some days are very slow um and it, it that's just the nature of the industry today right. um trying to maintain and and when you're not working in the booth you're working on marketing you're on social media you're promoting yeah. stuff you know appearances like this which i did earlier today you'd be happy to know <laughs> um and uh you know thinking i'm starting to think you know myself about updating my website and my demos and things like that that you want to do on a pretty consistent basis um so you're still thinking about what you need to do to grow your business even though it may not be all mic time uh, it can vary, you know, careers are funny things. No two are identical. Right. Everyone's workflow can be different. I have friends who work in different areas of the business that I don't work in because my career just hasn't led me that way. And they say the same about me. I'm doing work that they don't do. They're doing more animation or video games or, or even e-learning and IVR and that whole, uh, part of the industry. The industry has grown so much and it's so vast. It's hard to 
keep your feet in everything. And I find yeah. from for my sanity and for <laughs> and for what's left of it and 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 for having some kind of semblance of control over it. Here's my I'm going to create a, my little square yard of the voiceover industry. Right. And it, it can encompass several things, but trying to do it all and spend all your time trying to audition for every job and um, you have to is, sort of like is, decide at some point you're staying a course here yeah for a while and this is this what through. i do it's not that i can't do other things you can't constantly be oh i should try this new direction pursuing everything new thing. and that's back to my you know what are you known for what do you want yeah. to be known for you sure you can explore over here and explore over there and if an opportunity comes your way out of the blue like it did for me recently with radio imaging like i said came from radio you, but you i hadn't done i never before? pursued any imaging yeah. before oh. and an opportunity out of the blue came my way and i took it and it led someplace and that's great so that's another way to have um, uh, more thumbs and more pies mm -hmm. right. these days, especially. You can't just rely on one avenue of work. At least I can't. Right. Um, and I think most people would relate to that. Um, mm -hmm. Trying to be, that's how you can show your versatility. You're still you, but you're showing up in different ways, different types of work. Right. And no one wouldn't even know what you're doing one or the other. They're totally Doesn't different matter. styles so, yeah, and stuff. Yeah, as long as you can manage the, the workflow and, the, and, and you know mm -hmm. keep everybody happy, no one needs to know what you're doing over here. Mm -hmm. right. Exactly. Once again, Thompson Howell is our guest here on Voiceover Body Shop. Again, if you got a question, throw it in the chat room Please. because yeah. we can. You, you, how often do you get a chance to talk to somebody who's as accomplished as he is and really knows the business that well? Uh, so make sure you you can do that. Um, what are you working on right now? Anything that you can actually tell us about? What can I tell you about? Ah. Uh... God, the usual daily grind is part of it. There's no particular campaign I'm on right now. Right. Uh, I do a lot of work for Disney XD, a lot of their promo stuff. That's pretty regular. Um, you saw the part of the clip, uh, IFC documentary now, I'm the voice yeah. of that show, which is uh, very successful. As, as you were saying, you're the voice, voice of that particular show. Of that particular show, show not yeah. of the entire network. Right. Uh, I've recently done some work for Food Network, or Cooking Channel, actually. They're owned yeah. by the same company. But, uh, for Man vs. Food. Oh. You know the show? Oh, yeah. Oh, Richmond. it's crazy. Jonathan R Richmond, his name is. Uh, uh, Casey Webb. They got a oh, new guy. No, they got a new guy. Well, the other guy just exploded. Same idea, yeah. Eating way too much. Waiting and... way too much food, <laughs> crazy, hot food, just volumes of food. Anyway, uh, and they wanted me to do some crazy voice like this for it, so I did. Um, and, and and the rest is just is day-to-day -day stuff. Yeah. You know? But you see, that's, you know, we all talk about the announcer voice. Uh, in all specs these days, say no announcers, no announcers, except for you. Uh, <laughs> well, sometimes there's a in, you know promo. There's a call for they want someone a Don Pardo esque kind of you know right. thing, and it's a poor you know it's not really how I talk. Obviously, I'm talking to you now. Right. Um, but but there is a trend towards um, in the business at large. You know, not a bit of trend. It's been building for a while. You know, authentic. We want a little more authentic kind of sound. You know, right. non, especially in commercial, non-announcery. Right. Don't push. You know, sell. Don't tell. Don't sell. Um, that's a big thing, and that comes into promo sometimes too. Uh, promo is a little more flashy and a little more specific than commercial is. Um, so it's got to have a, a certain scale to it right. um, to sell the show. Um, but it's still, it's not all big. Big time Gary Owens announcer. Voices well, yeah, anymore, no, yeah. Yeah. clearly not. I mean, trailer, but trailer is generally, you know, some of the powerful voices. And, uh, right. Uh, Although most, you know, most of the trailer stuff I do, and I'm, I'm relatively, you know, compared to some of the big whales that do all the trailer work, I'm right. fairly new to that game. You want to talk about a part, a part of the industry that's the tip of the voiceover pyramid. It is hard to get into. Well, you worked for Don LaFontaine for years, George. You know. It's, he was it, the iceberg. Yep. For like <laughs> he a was while. The, he was the tip of the iceberg. And then <laughs> he was a big chunk of it. <laughs> and there's more opportunity to get into that part of the business too, but it is yeah. so hard because there are the people who are doing it and it's very competitive. And it and it's about people rela uh, relationships yeah. uh, uh, and, and and getting known right. for doing that work. But most of my work is very quiet, you know. Right. Very don't push. So that's, you know, non announcery in that sense. Well, the other, on the other end of that, maybe after we have a break, we to talk about the, the radio imaging, how that's, yeah, how that's sure. unique. Like that's, yes, that's very, a, another, very you know, and genre. like I said, I'm kind of new to it. And it's a, it's, a, it's a very unique, specific genre of voiceover that All can right. be pursued. All right. Well, we'll get a chance to talk to it. But let's take a break right now. We're with Thompson Howell on Voiceover Body Shop, and we'll be right back.
Hey guys, this is Tom, also known as the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants, and you want to fill your ear holes and your eye holes with Dan and George and the Audio Body Shop. Meow, <laughs> snail. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, cause I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Imagine mandatory retirement at age 57. And J. Rodney Turner wasted no time when he got that news. He decided what the next act in life was going to be for him. Voiceover. And fortunately for him, he chose the one form of acting, voice acting, for which the demand far exceeds the number of available performers. Audiobook narration. He worked hard and smart, and J. Rodney Turner's name is now on the cover of over 100 of those audiobooks, for sale right now on Audible, which he produced in just the last four years or so. Want to know a secret? Here it is, for free. David H. Lawrence the 17th has just released the first episode of a free video training series devoted to audiobooks, and it tells just how J. Rodney Turner did it, in vivid detail. Visit vo2gogo.com forward slash vobs to see it. If the idea of getting paid to tell stories appeals to you, or if you're already doing audiobooks but aren't having the success you know you're capable of achieving, this video is a must-see. Check out the video here. Visit vo2gogo.com forward slash vobs. That's vo2gogo.com forward slash vobs. And we're back with Thompson Howell here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Again, still got questions for him. We'd love to hear from you. Let's talk about, well, we're, we're going to talk about... Um, what was the subject? Radio. Oh, radio. Radio imaging. Radio imaging. I was curious. I'm always curious about it. Because that's th there's a lot more people doing that yeah. because there's a lot more radio stations. And, and the what pace the, structure is different, too. Yeah. From Tell us about what, what imaging is like. Totally. totally. Like, like I said, or something. Right. Like I said, my first radio imaging job came to me very recently and, and sort of out of the blue, and I'm still pursuing it. Uh, yeah, it's it's the voice of a radio station. You know, tonight on KNX 1070 or whatever, right. uh, whatever station you're voicing for. And it's all about promoting the image of, uh, of a radio station. And the cool thing about it is, you know, I never pursued it because you and all, we all have lots of friends who've been doing that work for a long time. Yeah. It's yeah. a very specific type of work and they're really good at it. So I never pursued it myself, but when the opportunity came along, I said, yes, because you say yes to opportunities like that. Yeah. But the cool thing is it's retainer. It's monthly, you're paid on a monthly basis, regular retainer work to do a certain amount of work and to basically license your voice to the radio station exclusively in the city in which it's broadcasting. Right. Um, so that's the cool thing about it. Um, and there are agents uh, and agency, talent agencies who specialize in that, who have the relationships with those buyers at uh, individual stations or radio station uh, groups, uh, companies. Um, mm -hmm. And that's how that kind of work. Kind so, of so you'll do it for a whole chain of stations? occasionally or is it not me but yeah. there i mean you know uh, howard kogan our friend howard kogan you know jack fm i mean that's kind of his thing um yeah uh, I th I mean, he, they may have shrunk the number of stations that do that branding now but but that's howard that's about as close as you get i don't know if there's one person who does every station in a group but uh, mm -hmm. again i'm new to it too so right. i keep learning right so they, they'll they'll send you like a script of liners and you'll read them like five, six different ways. Yeah, that's then... prearranged ahead of time. I mean, yeah. a contract calls for, you know, we can send you a page of stuff and it's specified, you know, it's not six point type and, you know, it's, it's 12 point type or certain amount of, a certain amount of words to read in a month. Um, 
up to anyway. You may not read anything. You may read that full amount uh, in exchange for this uh, retainer and the mm -hmm. use of your voice on stuff you may have recorded several months ago. They'll just keep reusing it. A lot of the so evergreen stuff. there's a usage stuff. thing as well. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, nice. I mean, it's not a, yeah, you're it's paid to, for, to do the work, but also yeah. even if you don't get any fresh stuff to record, right. you're paid because they're still broadcasting your voice. But how's the turnaround on this stuff? Pretty, pretty timely, turnaround. Right? You know, it I, contractually. You know, the one contract I was under was um, they said forty eight hours. I was twenty four max, and sometimes immediately. If I'm you caught me at the right time, something right. came in. It's a line or two. I'll just bang it out there and get it back to you because they're waiting for it. Yeah, you know, the imaging. You know what? I keep in my head. I am getting the imaging and the affiliate stuff kind of mixed up. I know the affiliate stuff is really, right, really and that's like, that's a, a world I'm I'm not. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I hear in my head. I'm getting the two kind of conflated. But, if if yeah. you're working at a TV station yeah. tonight on ABC Seven that's News, that's stupid. Event, stupid. They short they term. typically want you. We need you here. Yeah. We yes. need you here. We need the story you here. Just broke. We've got yes. to have three yeah, times right. a day, and if yeah. story breaks, right. you know. Yeah. Um, and I, I couldn't really tell you what the conversation is yeah, like with that, but I assume it's. But with the imaging, more. it's not so intense on the turnaround. Yeah, one to Im two radio days. Imaging is a little more good. relaxed. You know, okay. they're That's they're good. feeding you stuff out. Um, yeah. I suppose there could be exceptions to that. Yeah. Do they? You get any direction with that? Or are they like, yeah, just do it the way you normally do. My it. experience, yeah, <laughs> we worked on. You know, they 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 heard something. My agent Nate uh, at CESD in New York. Uh, reached out to me and said, hey, we've got some stations that are interested in something different. They know a lot of the usual suspects. They're all fine and wonderful, but they want to hear something different. They wanted something a little more promo and dark and da-da-da-da-da, <laughs> which said, okay, that's kind of somewhat odd for a radio station, but if they like it, let's go for it. Um, so they sent me some material. And what was your question again? I, I'm well, uh, did you get directed. Yeah, and yeah. they said, this is the kind of thing we want. We heard some stuff on your promo demo and your commercial demo. We kind of want something in that range. So that was initial direction. And then we sort of, when I started working with them, when they hired me, we sort of refined things a little bit more. Um, and then we said, that's the read. Let's stick to that and do that all the time. It makes it simple. <laughs> it makes it simple. And if we need to change it, we'll work on that. But this is, this is what we want. So. Right. How much do you do, say, how many times, how often do you call to a bigger studio and how much do you do at home? Hmm. I rarely... 99, easily 99% of all my work, whatever it is, comes out of my home studio, which is broadcast quality. Thanks to my friend George here. And <laughs> or better. My no, I like or better. Better. Better, There's than, no better than broadcast quality. Broadcast quality. This is, it's this is professional is quality. quality. Yeah. It's, uh, that is like <laughs> commercial quality. <laughs> we don't really have a word for it, but it, it's pro commercial quality right. for yeah. sure. Okay. Yeah. Broadcast is a standard. You guys argue 60s. about that. We I'm always out. we love no. to argue about yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> um anyway, it's where where I and I still have I mean, I've got well George can tell you more about it because he's worked on it recently, but uh I still have old fashioned ISDN. Don't tell AT and T, but I'm paying a kind of nice price for my ISDN service. Well, you got one of those backdoor deals. And I uh, know yeah. I've had the account for a while, so I guess they sort of grandfathered me in. I don't know. But you know, yeah. when I move, forget it. They'll yeah. pull yeah. Love, it. Love it while you have it. Love it while you have yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it gets used used pretty often. Um but mm -hmm. it's, I can also connect from Source Connect or IPDDL. Um, but the way my workflow is, I, it's funny. It's funny. There are people who all, always use Source Connect or always use IPDDL, and I never do. It's either stuff I record and, and upload via FTP, mm -hmm. like to the radio stations, or it's the networks or people using uh, working ISDN or using my ISDN box for phone patch. Right. Or, you know, same idea. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, we actually have a question about more about your studio. Yeah, sure. Dwayne DeSalvo. Hey, Dwayne. And he wants to know a little bit about the, the microphone you use for promo. Is it anything different? From Not really. It's, it, it's, it's the Sennheiser 416 yes. that I primarily use for, for promo. Yeah. Um, I have two mics in the studio. I've got my, my 416 and, and the Neumann TLM 103. Um, I am, I'm sure I could try tons of other microphones and spent a lot of money but you're still going to sound like thompson but i'm still it's still going <laughs> to yeah. be me so i think yeah. it, unless you're a real mic geek or tech geek yeah it's go ahead and play around with different my, my, different microphones but find the one you think you sound best at and stick with that and don't try you don't need a whole closet full of microphones right i mean um, again like, unless you're a real geek unless you're 
like these ones on the wall over here are lovely. Yeah, People I don't see use those. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're on the wall. wall. Yeah. Literally. That's why they're on the wall. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's a museum. Yeah. But, it, Dwayne, it's, it's the, uh, the Sennheiser MKH 416. Of course. Mm-hmm. Well, which is the mic of choice. And you'll find that most of the studios here in L.A., that's what they I mean, and just for straight commercial work. I mean, that's, that's what I use in it's my a, studio. And Recently, I, I heard that if you, for some reason, are like, I just got to go spend $1,200. This money is, I have no room to put this money anymore. Go to right. It's Alaska. getting ridiculous. I've got to spend it. I must spend it. <laughs> then there's the MKH-60. That's certain, it's sort of Sennheiser's, let's redesign a 416 maybe with slightly better everything. And then they put that mic out. Could it's can like, it be done? It's a little bit newer. <laughs> I'm hearing it's great. I've heard but some. But I mean, <laughs> is it going to change your business? I don't think so. Yeah. I've heard some friends use the shorter. I don't know what they have the model number is. Shorter. There's a little teeny wee yeah. one. It's like this long. Well, it's, it's not even the, a shotgun. I think it's, it's the 80, 40, 40, or, 80, 40 or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. A- Anthony Mendez or something. Yeah, oh, yeah. exactly. Yeah, he uses that. It's a little teeny weeny mic. Um, but it doesn't matter if it's a good quality. If it says Sennheiser on it, it's yeah. pretty much. Or Neumann. You're pretty much, you know, yeah. good Mostly to go. The, the guys like you and Anthony Mendez, you would sound good on a Wall and Zach recorder. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you can, you know, the, the 416 is, you can get it for what? It's eight, ubiquitous. You can eight, get them for around 800 eight, 800 bucks. Yeah. New ones. Yeah. I yeah. got my, my very first one uh, I bought uh, online. What was the website? It was a tech website that mm-hmm. went under that I think eBay bought. Anyway. Yeah. Um. But it was originally used because it was originally designed for location recording, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was on yeah. a boom pole. It's a yeah. video. And it, and it was still set up that way. It was so you had the 12 volt something or other. I sent it to Sennheiser and they had some special going on at the time. I said, We're basically giving you an entirety new microphone, except for the outside, the shell. Right. The oh. insides are replaced, so it's oh. the 48. The fan, the oh, that's phantom cool. power and stuff. So, oh. and then I bought another one for my for my road rig. Yeah, I call it the yeah. uh, the travel rig. So. Yeah. Do, do you? And, and that's the thing. If you're doing promo work and that sort of thing you go on the road you gotta you've you gotta, gotta be, be you've gotta be able to do it. a lot of people are like well i gotta have a road rig well if you're not doing that kind of work you're doing why have a road rig you know, but, well you can use the road rig for auditions i mean right. auditions come in but certainly if you're on it if you're voicing a show and they you know you're on the beach somewhere and you, you want to bring uh bring your good equipment your travel equipment with you you need to have it um because your client is paying you, you know, part of what they're paying you for is to be available. When we have a new promo we need to cut, we need it done. That's right. Um so absolutely. Another question from Bob Should Hurley. We keep doing with the questions. Keep yeah. doing with the questions. Okay, here we go. Um Bob says, "Hey Thompson." Hey, Bob. Since, he actually said, "Hi Thompson." Sorry. I didn't mean well, to Bob and misquote I are you, Bob. He didn't say hello to us, but uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> since you are an avid keyboardist, can you speak to the musicality of promo? Wow, and VO question. in general, and how it and your musical talent helps inform your reads. Thanks. Great question, Bob. Definitely um, from a voice actor. <laughs> yeah, definitely from a guy who knows what he's doing too, Bob. Uh, Bob Hurley. Um, yeah, I mean, I think in any area of voiceover, certainly promo. Having a musical background helps you just with the music, the musicality of phrases, how to highlight a word just a little bit, timing, pauses. You know, like in music, it's their notes or rests or things like that. The same, it's a sensitivity you have to the words you're speaking. Great quote from Maya Angelou I read recently. You know, it's not just about the words on the page. It takes the voice to give them meaning, you know, um, and hearing them back. And I think someone with a musical background or, or musical sensibilities, whether you play an instrument or not, is very helpful uh, in, uh, um, in, in, in voiceover in general, but certainly... I think in in promo and trailer where you've got such short periods of time to tell the story you're telling if you're telling this little 30 second story you're not talking all those 30 seconds but it is a tiny little story and you're a part of it and you want to maximize you know take advantage of the skills you have to really bring out the meaning in those words do you think i was just thinking of like music terms i i studied music a long time ago and it's like what's one that would translate do you ever have an occasion to use an accelerando, for example, like accelerate? Accelerate, yeah. Well, that's sure. That's part of, you know, especially in promos. You know, the, the it's got a certain structure to it. Yeah. And then at the end, especially these days, you're driving to the end. It's always, you know, uh, something new show on Fox coming tonight, True, Thursday. Yeah. Blah 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 blah. It kind of picks right. up right. tempo and it, boom, to the end because the time is going to cut you off. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, there you go. So that's that's, that's one translates. way you can do it. Yeah. Okay. But, cool. Good question, Bob. It's a great question. Yeah, it is. 
You got a music background. Yeah. Um, and from Mark Chen, um, I've heard that much of promo work, Trump, much of promo work comes through managers. Um, if so, how much of your work comes this way? Thanks. Yeah. Uh, good question, Mark. Um, Mark, was that right? Yeah, Mark, Mark Chen. No, Mark Chen. Uh, good question. Um, promo work for me uh, and other people who I do have agents and several agents and my manager, Debbie Cope, um, promo, it can be a split. You can get a lot of work, promo work through agents for sure. Um, where a manager is especially helpful because uh, sometimes there's intersecting um, relationships that your agents and managers share. But all of my trailer work comes through my manager. Um, and, and, you know, most of the uh, voiceover managers uh, based here, either in L.A. or New York, are the ones who really have the relationships with the, the trailer houses, the trailer producers, and the studios themselves to um, get you in as a consideration for the voice of a trailer campaign. Uh, but promo, yeah, you, if you have a, an agent who is strong in promo, and not every agent agency is depends on where you are. I'm not sure. Did he say where Mark said no, where he was? No. Um, uh, you want you still want whoever your representative is. They still have to have a strong footprint in promo or in whatever genre you're trying to work in. Um, so, can we let's squeeze one more in real quick? Go for it. No, we got time. Um, Gerard McGuire. All right. Yes. Uh, Prisoner in the cell block eight. <laughs> Follow up regarding music. Do you use the music to? Uh, do you ever get to use the music track to inform your read? Um, have you had it played while you narrate? I just heard of somebody doing this recently. Actually, it surprised me. Has you that ever happen? Not um, for the cable stuff. Uh, typically not because I'm recording on my own. You know, with yeah. phone patch, phone patch to not them. Live. They may play me music down the line just so I can hear it and get a, a feeling for the vibe. Yeah. Uh, but then I'm, it's not a live feed. If right. you're working network promo, you know, the voice is about the, the last thing they're dropping in. So they've already produced the promo, the, the SOTs, uh, the, the, the drop-ins. Sound the, on uh, tape. Yeah, it's yeah. old. That's a whole another topic. <laughs> of, you know, old technology, <laughs> uh, terminology we still use. Yeah. Well, like um, back in the radio days, it's like you got to pick the right music to go with the spot right. and stuff like that. And that totally, you know, regulated how you were going to talk about it. So they'll already have the SOTs, the sound effects, the music, whatever they're using already in there. And you're just slotting yourself in, which is where the timing comes in, yeah, to fine. each of those uh, uh, places where you need to speak. Um, so that's really the only instance where you would uh, be hearing the music to help, or the, the whole entire sound design of the production that's going to help inspire your read. Um, but for the stuff you're reading and uploading, not typically. All right, a little esoteric. Maybe it, maybe it's, if, if you don't know the answer, just say I don't know. But why do you think the trailer business is basically controlled through the relationships of really three managers, three management companies? Why do you th why do you think that from is? from a talent standpoint? Yeah, what? I mean, you know, that's that's uh, I. I don't really know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> that's right? all for tonight, I, folks. That's it. It's yeah. unique. No, I think, I but I think it's 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 been that way for such a long time. Yeah, and I think. I don't know enough about the history of how that all yeah. started. Yeah. The man, you know, Debbie, my man, Debbie Cope was one of the first out there. Um, and uh, Wintner and Jason Marks and mm -hmm. ECM, and I'm probably forgetting one, and I can't remember. But mm -hmm. but it, it just seems to be the best way to uh, get your clients' work is to have a relationship with the buy, personal relationship with them. You know, good working relationship, because there's a lot at stake. They're going to pay you a lot of money. If you got a if you got a trailer campaign, they're going to pay you well. Especially if the movie does well. Yeah, yeah. If the movie does well, you do well. Even if even if it's just a, uh, a few spots, it depends. You know, campaigns can vary in size. You're going to get paid well. They want to work with people they like and trust. It's like like everyone else in the world. You if you find people you like working with and to do a good job for you, um, you want to try and use them again. Um, so I, I yeah. could it work another way? I uh, maybe. But I think there's so few people who hire for trailer in the trailer houses and the studios themselves. It's easier to have personal personal relationships with them. That's true. I than it is in the much... commercial industry, where you know, yeah, you know, back in long time ago, you could I could call up a copywriter in Chicago at Leo Burnett, make a lunch or coffee date, play my demo, uh, my little cassette demo, crappy setup <laughs> I had, and get feedback. You know, <laughs> now and then you know, voicemail came along on that. 
that no, all went down much for that. So. Crazy. One last question. Sure. Uh, if you were going to give somebody some advice to get into this business, I mean, we've been covering different things, but what, you know, in a nutshell, what would you tell someone who's like, I really want to do this? How would, how would you get them to pursue it? And understanding is not going to happen tomorrow morning. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. First, no, or, or trying to figure out, you know, what do you want to pursue? We were talking earlier about, you know, trying to do it all. Uh, scattershot can, can be tiring and expensive. So, you know, we, f commercial is kind of the foundational um, area of voiceover, to me anyway. Um, take a class. This is going to depend on where you live. If you live in LA, New York, Chicago, no problem. There's plenty of voiceover classes. I don't know if Omaha has voiceover classes. They may. But there, there may be uh, ways you can take a class online. And, I, and, and a group class. Um, I think it's, especially when you're starting out, no matter what genre, take a class with other people who are in your boat. Because mm -hmm. there's subjective learning. You standing in front of a microphone, other people watching you, and the objective learning where you're outside the booth watching other people work with the director or teacher. And I guarantee you're going to learn my experiences a lot more being the objective viewer, watching someone else do it. You learn both ways. One, you learn what it's like to do the work yourself. When you're watching someone else do it, then you have a clear understanding of why it works because you have a little more analytical uh, yeah. brain activity yeah. at that time, I think. That's so take, sense. definitely take a class um, it's, um, you know, coaching is great. One-on-one -on -one coaching is great for certain things at certain times, but not if you're first starting out, you need, you need the benefit of other people's uh, experiences, uh, and, and they from yours. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thompson Howell, ladies and gentlemen, uh, hey, thanks right. for being with us. Absolutely. Thank pleasure, you. Pleasure to meet you yes. and have you over here and, uh, and for your expertise and information. I'm happy to be here and glad to be, uh, glad to be working. All right. Thanks well, for coming across. Yeah, George. It's in <laughs> All right, George and I'll be right back to wrap things up right after this. You're watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. Well, it's that time of the show where we get to talk about our wonderful sponsors, Source Elements, the inventors of Source Connect, the ones that make it and sell it. And basically, there's a lot of these systems out there now that stream your audio from your studio to the other studio in real time. We've talked about them endlessly on this show. Um, and it's becoming harder to probably differentiate what they're for, what they do, and they don't do. And one thing that just really definitely sets Source Connect standard and pro apart from the other, a lot of the other platforms out there is it is really a dedicated application. Um, and why is that important? It's because that application is supported, developed, and supported by Source Elements. And it's completely independent of anything else on your machine. It doesn't care what version of Chrome browser is running. Um, it's independent of, you know, Chrome updating itself at random, which it does all the time, um, and just provides a really more, a much more reliable, stable platform. Another thing is when you buy it, you buy it. You can buy a license for Source Connect one time 
when everything else has gone subscription, they still offer that ability to just buy the license one time and own it for good. And uh, I've got a license that's probably five, six years old, still works beautifully on my systems. I haven't had to upgrade it once. And that's just something that really differentiates it. The other thing is it's just, it's the one that's in all the studios by far. So if you want to be ready to work with those top studios, go get Source Connect. You can get it right now at source-elements.com and get a 15-day free trial. Get it up and running, have it ready, get that demo, and then you'll be ready when the job comes in. Thanks a lot, Source Elements. We'll be right back. From voiceoveressentials.com, the skies will soon be aglow with brilliant colors, just like our VO recording sign, now on sale. Act fast, there's a limited supply. Bask in the lovely glow of our remote control 20 color LED sign with more colors than most fireworks displays. Just be sure your significant others can see it and odds are when it lights up, they'll quiet down whilst you're making a living. And because we're celebrating the 4th, you'll save $10 when you buy now. Hurry, we revert to our hard-hearted stingy selves at the stroke of midnight Thursday, July 4th. Free shipping in the USA. The voiceover recording sign sold exclusively at voiceoveressentials.com. It looks great anywhere. Used by voiceovers everywhere, even in the city of love. Save $10 now. Sale ends midnight Thursday, July 4th. Harlan Hogan's voiceoveressentials.com. Porta Boots, and so much more. Wow. Thompson's really interesting. I, I, you know, we I get, knew it. Everybody's good on this show. Yeah. His information was tight. That's what yeah. we need. That's what people need to hear. Concise. Absolutely. Masterclass in 40 minutes for free. Right here. All right. And you only get it here at VoiceOver Body Shop. Um, next week, of course, we'll run Tech Talk number... 12. 11 I only had 12. No, 12. 12. I only had 10 yeah. fingers. So okay. we'll get 10 and then two. There Hold your go. hands up. That, does that work? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. There. All right. That was terrible. Right. Can and we then, edit that in later? And then the following week, we'll have another great guest. <laughs> yeah. And we won't tell who it is quite yet. Uh, who are our donors of the week? Well, maybe I should close the Save As browser window and take a look. I know. Um, donors of the week include. Christy Burns, Don Griffith, Dwayne DeSalvo, Martha Kahn, Antland Productions, and that's Uncle Roy, Roy Diana Birdsall, Patty Gibbons, Brian Page, and Pilar Uribe. And if I see more names pop up in our brow in my browser, I will read them out to you before we wrap. So I don't uh, want to miss anybody. Yeah. And you can donate simply by going to our website if you're watching there right now. Dwayne DeSalvo. Dwayne DeSalvo. Thanks, Dwayne. Thanks, Dwayne. Ask a great question and donated to the show because he got his question answered. Appreciate it. Uh, just have to click the Donate Now button. And, you know, it doesn't take much, and it helps us maintain the technical magnificence that this show has shown for the past six months. Since, Don Griffith, Martha yeah. Kahn, a few more names that slipped in here. So, yeah, thank you, everybody. All right, great. Hey, we want you to show us your booths because if you don't, we get to show pictures of Alaska instead. <laughs> uh, which is fine, but we'd really rather have your own booths because it's just more interesting to share what it is you're doing at home. So right. even if it's a pile of mattresses, <laughs> what does this mean? That means landscape, landscape, not portraits. Yes. Think Ansel Adams. We want it to be a wide shot so we can put it up behind us and have a, a view of your studio. And like Ansel Adams, it could be a black and white. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, Why not? really. You can have half dome in the back. It's, you know. <laughs> Anyway, uh, let's see. We need to, uh, of course, we need to tell people if they want help with their home studio, all you have to do if you want to work with George is go to georgethetech.com. That's my website. You can shop over there. You can also go to georgethe.tech for those who like short domains. That's Save right. a keystroke. All right. Or three. Yeah. And if you want to talk to me about your home voiceover studio, you can go to homevoiceoverstudio.com and I'll be happy to uh, get you set up. Yeah, especially if you have no idea what you're doing. I have a new thing on there, by the way, on my you website. Do. I decided to figure out a way if somebody wants to bring me to their city. Yeah. It, I came up with this group buy thing. I mm -hmm. just call it Bring George Out. So cool. if you go to the website, look at services, you'll see a thing in there called Bring George Out. If you're in a city that maybe haven't been to ever or in a long time and you've got a few voiceover buddies, like maybe you're in Kansas City, maybe you're in Miami, I don't know. There's a way that you can bring, your, bring me in and cool, uh, come and have me go... Go to your own studios and share the cost of the travel and all that stuff. Right. So, and go, speaking go, of take a look. Yeah, and speaking of bringing people in, if 
we like to be in our audience here in this magnificent, humongous studio of ours. Look at this place. You can you can see you can join us by writing to it's us massive. at the guys at vobs.tv and say, hey, I want to be at, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be in Los Angeles. Yeah. I'm, I live around the corner and I can come over and watch the show and that would be great. Please Let do. us know. And, you know, but we got to give you the secret handshake first and able to get in here. We need to thank our sponsors like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. Oh, there's more of them? Yeah, uh, VoiceOver Extra. Uh, source Elements. VO to go, go. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And Jim Michael Collins Demos. All right. We also need to thank the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the betterment of better webcasting. Uh, also, uh, Catherine Curridan will be back eventually. Yeah, she's Start taking producer. a little brace That's for true. family break. Uh, Mike Merlino, whatever it was he was doing tonight, uh, <laughs> and his mom, Sue Merlino, our magnificent technical director for all the work that she does and making it just absolutely seamless. And Lee Penny, simply for being Lee Penny. Well, this isn't an easy business, and we appreciate you coming out and watching the show uh, and watching all week or watching it live or whatever it is. But we're here to help you out with your home studio and with your home voiceover studio and with your voiceover business. Because if it sounds good... It is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver... Body Shop. Or VO... B.S. Thanks for watching, everybody. Now, don't go away.